Hello, ladies, and welcome to episode 18 of Reconstructing Case Story, Units. In this episode, we're going to be introducing some units types into our code base. Because right now, we have a problem. We have so many units going on right now, and so little types to account for them. So let's talk about what units we have right now. And by the way, when I talk about units, I mean like spatial units, like meters, or in our case, pixels, or game units, which I'll talk about in one more second. And then we have tile units, where we have, we increment by tile sizes instead of by uh, pixels. And then we have time units, like we have hertz, which are just basically our, what I'm calling frames per second in the game. <clears throat> and we have milliseconds, we have combinations of those for velocity and acceleration. So we've got all sorts of different units. And what C++ types are we using to describe all these different units? We are using floats, int, and unsigned int. And that means um, our current mapping. Um, actually, let me talk about the game first. Um, <clears throat> so we have these game units, which are basically one-to-one -one with the pixels if we are using 32 by 32 sprites. But if we're using 16 by 16 sprites, then it's one game unit to two pixels. And this is so that we can conserve our um, gameplay when we switch resolutions. So that's what a game unit is. But anyway, our current mapping is basically this. We have floats to game units, int to pixels for our C++ type. So we have all these overloaded uses of the word int. And it gets confusing when you're saying like source x. Are you saying in tile units? Are you saying in, like you have int source x. Is that a tile unit? Is that a pixel unit? Is that a game unit? I don't know. It's hard to tell. And we have no way, we have no systematic way of labeling these things. So that's what we're going to do in this episode is systematically label everything. And at the same time, add more precision to our player position. Because instead of being in pixel units, our player position will be in game units. So really the most confusing part is the game pixel tile, um, because these are all three of these are spatial units of measure, and at different points in the code, they could all be integers. And so this is confusing. And I mean, you might be able to keep track of it in your head, but why not just label it? Because it's not that hard to label it. And it really makes the job of figuring out when to convert a lot easier. And trust me on that, it makes it a lot easier. You can try it without it, and you probably won't have a good time doing it. You, you will be able to do it. You won't have a good time doing it, though. So yeah, let's, um, so let's start by giving ourselves some units. And I'll do that by creating a new unit uh, header file. And I'll call it units.h because it's going to have multiple units in it. We'll add that. And we'll do our normal header guards in the units h. And define units h and in the units h. And I'm going to put everything in a namespace. And I'm going to call this namespace units. So there's a couple different ways we could implement our types. We could implement them as simple type depths. So type depth uh, example would be float game. Um, we could make a full fledged struct. Um, so we could do struct pixel, and this would have a bunch of overloaded um, operator plus minus, so it would act just like an integer. Um, or there's another thing called boost strong type def, um, which actually creates another type, which would be really similar to this solution, except 
In this solution, we could have some extra um, conversion operators, which is what we would want ideally to have. So I'm going to eschew um, this strong type def idea because it doesn't give us enough flexibility. And then the other uh, choice is to do struct pixel. And while this is cool because we can have compiler reinforce things, it just ends up being a pain because you have to cast everything. Like if you have a naked six and you want to use that as a pixel, you have to cast it to a pixel. Like you want to add six to this pixel value, you have to cast it to a pixel or you have to overload a bunch of different operator pluses. So I'm actually not going to do that. So these aren't going to be really that different from our, um, we're going to do the type def way of doing this. And this isn't going to be that different from actually using a float, except that it will read a lot better. So this is really labeling, just labeling. We're not actually using a new type or anything for this. So yeah, um, I'll just write out uh, our other types, which are pixel. So type def pixel to be an int. And actually, let me explain a little bit. So we use float for extra precision. And gain units represent intrinsic units of position, like um, intrinsic to the game itself, not related to the screen size or resolution, so that we can convert between resolutions properly. And then here, I'm using an int integer because we want pixels to be discrete units. But I'm also making it an integer and not like an unsigned integer because we want pixel values to be able to be negative for those times when you're partially off the left side, when you're drawing stuff that's partially off the left side of the screen. Like you need to be able to use negative pixel values to represent that. Or I like to use pixel, negative pixel values. So pixel values can be positive or negative. So I'm just kind of outlining why I'm choosing these types, these primitive types for these type defs. So then we have a tile. And these are not ever going to be negative, so I'm going to make them unsigned ints. Also discrete, but non-negative. And then we have milliseconds. And I'm going to call that MS, capital MS, because all the other types I've been using have been capital. I mean, it might look better lowercase, but I'm fine with making it capital because it fits our style. And then I'm using, I'm actually going to use unsigned in instead of integer because um, that's how SDL does it. And we're going to be using a lot of SDL methods and it will save our brains if we just use a regular unsigned int to match with the SDL way of doing things. So there's also um, the lesser used FPS type. And this is just frames per second and hertz for one or one over second. That's what it represents. And we have two more, uh, one for velocity, which I'm just going to call velocity. And it's just going to be a float a lot like game. Um, the reason I'm not calling it um, games per millisecond or something verbose like that is if I did that, I would just be too annoyed to write it. So I'm doing it this way and then documenting that it's games per millisecond. And we, we won't ever define um, velocity or acceleration in terms of seconds because we don't really use seconds. So these will be also in game per millisecond, per millisecond, or per millisecond squared if you prefer. So I'm going to give ourselves a few conversion functions, and I'll list them out first. Um, so we need game to pixel, game to tile, tile to game, and tile to pixel, which is really just going to be game to tile. Or no, it's going to be tile to game, and then game to pixel. That's what it, that's what that's going to be. 
So I'm going to make these all in line um, just because I can. Why not? And so the first one's going to return a pixel value, and it's going to be called game to pixel. And it'll take a game, of course, game. And yeah, I'll call it game. And this is a different game than the one we have in the global scope. Uh, because this one's inside of units, so whenever it's referred to outside of this namespace, it's going to be referred to as units game. So we're going to know for sure that this is saying, oh, those are game units, and that's why I'm not calling this game units, because that would be units game units, and that would be repetitive. So I don't want to do that. So let's return. Um, this is actually going to be kind of interesting. For now, I'm going to assume that we're in 16 by 16 mode. So to do, quit assuming 16 by 16. And this will return. Um, we have to, first of all, round our game. But before we do that, we want to divide it by half, which is the same thing as multiplying times which is the same thing as times 16 divided by 32, which is what we've been doing. So I'm just going to do divided by 2 now because we have a float instead of an integer. Yeah. Um, I mean, for more, for less interesting reasons. Not interesting reasons. But yeah, I'm doing game divided by 2. And then I want to cast this to a pixel using a C++ style constructing cast. And of course, we need to include CMath so we can get at that rounding. Um, so yeah, so we'll leave that in as a to do. Okay, now we have game to tile, which is inline game, and this will be sorry tile, and this will be game to tile taking in a game. And this is just going to divide by our intrinsic tile size. So this means we need an intrinsic tile size. So I'm going to make one. And I'll call this k tile size. And I'm putting it in a nested namespace because I don't want it to be visible outside of this namespace, this user namespace. So I'm putting it in an anonymous namespace so nobody can get at it. So we'll call it. Uh, it'll be in game units, and it'll be k tile size, and this will be exactly 32.0. Um, so when we do game to tile, we'll return a tile casted um, <coughs> cast of a game divided by k tile size. And so this will return a floating point value inside of here. And when we cast it down to a tile, which is an unsigned int, it'll be truncated, which is exactly what we want. Because remember, when we are wondering what tile we're in, we truncate. And that's because tiles are defined by the upper left corner. So anyway, moving on, we have tile to game. And then here we finally return a tile, or a game. <laughs> the tile to game, and this is just going to take in a tile, tile, and this will return um, tile times k tile size. And again, that's this local k tile size, which is different from the game k tile size over in game.h. So finally, we have tile to pixel, which is just going to be uh, inline pixel tile to, this is just kind of a convenience function. It doesn't actually do anything we couldn't do outside of use uh, units. But it'll take in a tile, and it'll first convert it to a game. So return tile to game, tile. And then it'll take that game and convert it to a pixel. So game to pixel tile to game tile. So those are our conversion functions. Hopefully they make sense. Probably this one doesn't make much sense yet, but that's because I'm doing this because we're ultimately going to be get ready, getting rid of our game K tile size, but I'm waiting, I'm holding off on doing that. So, so 
couple more edits to this file. Just get rid of these meaningless comments because we've implemented the functions. And I make this cost because we don't ever want to change this K tile size ever. So that's going to be cons. So let's go back to our notes. Um, so now that we have some more types to work with, let's look at what our new mapping looks like. So th remember, this is our old mapping. We have a float representing a game, an int representing pixels, an int representing tile, so on and so forth. Now we have a new mapping, which is going to be using these units. So we have units game representing game units. We have units pixels representing pixels units, and units tile representing tile units, and so on and so forth. And so our code is going to be a lot more readable and easy to, easy to categorize in our heads. We won't have to think about, oh, this is a tile. We need to convert it. Instead, it'll, it'll be completely obvious that it's a tile. Like, And then we'll have our conversion function to convert it to game units, which is what we might need, or pixel units, depending on when we need that. So it'll be really obvious which conversion we want to use. And then, yeah. Yep, that's actually all I wanted to say. So um, for part two, which is going to be released right after this, we're going to look at actually converting everything over into these new units and at the same time adding that precision to the player class. So thanks for watching, guys. See you in part two.